Uh, last week we began here, we're going to read this, this passage from uh, Colossians chapter 1 uh, through 1 through 12. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, and Timotheus, our brother, to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ, which are at Colossae. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God and to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love which you have to all saints, for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, whereof you heard before in the word of truth of the gospel, which is come unto you as it is in all the world, and bringeth forth fruit as it does also in you since the day you heard it and knew the grace of God in truth. As ye learned of Ephroditus, our dear fellow servant, who is for you a faithful minister of Christ, who also declared unto us your love in the Spirit. Now, if you just stop there, you're going to kind of think, man, see, you get born again, you're under the grace of God, you automatically bear fruit, and everything's just hunkadory. Except the problem is there's a verse 9. Amen? You have to read everything in context and balance it in context of against itself. Amen. If you just take this first eight verses, woo, I'm under grace. Uh, I'm the, you know, I've got the grace of God. Hallelujah. I'm bearing fruit. Glory to God just because I'm under the grace. Hallelujah. Woo, son, that, woo. Hallelujah. I'm going to go, I'm going to go out and drink some beer and celebrate. Hallelujah. I'm going to go out and sleep with my girlfriend and celebrate because it doesn't matter because I'm under grace and I'm bearing fruit. Well, then there's verse 9. For this cause, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you, hallelujah, and desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. Now, listen, it's the same bunch. He was telling them that they were bearing fruit and under grace. He's praying that they'll walk worthy and be pleasing to the Lord. Hallelujah. Being fruitful in every good work. But he says he bore fruit. Now, I will go back to that in a minute. Hallelujah. And increasing in the knowledge of God. Hallelujah. And he prayed that they be filled with the knowledge, but also increase in the knowledge. Strength with all might according to his glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering and joyfulness, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. I'm going to read verses 9 through 12 out of the wings real quick. For this reason also, from the day we received these tidings, they have never ceased to pray for you and to entreat that you might be filled with a clear knowledge of his will, accompanied by thorough wisdom and discernment in spiritual things, so that your lives may be worthy of the Lord and perfectly pleasing to him, while you exhibit the results of right action of every sort and grow into a fuller knowledge of God. Since his power is so glorious, may you be strengthened with the strength of every kind and be prepared for, um, for cheerful, enduring all things with patience and long suffering, and give thanks to the Father who has made us fit to receive our share of the inheritance of God's people in life. So, we have here, uh, and we, we're just going to kind of brush this and we're going to go on to where we are because we did cover this last week. But Paul says, you know, that, they're, that, 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 that they receive the message as they have in other parts of the world, and it's bearing fruit in them just like it is in other parts of the world. Now, he's simply talking in general terms. Not talking in specificity, specifically. I was trying to be, I was trying to do it right, but I just, I got tongue tied. So we're just, he, he's not speaking specifically that every individual is bearing fruit. He's saying in general terms, here among you, the fruit of what we preach is bearing fruit. And as it is in other places in the world, okay? That they have, been, they've come, they've come to the knowledge of this grace. And there, there is a, there is manifestation of that because there's fruit being born in their midst. But then he comes and begins to talk specifically about that they pray and desire for them, that they be, that they, um, be filled with the knowledge of him and all spiritual, uh, wisdom and spiritual understanding. And then he, that they might be walk worthy. Amen. That they might have fruit unto good works. What's this? <clears throat> you understand that, that, that though we may have fruit in our midst, God wants every individual to grow. God wants every individual to come into that full knowledge. And it's not, you know, and uh, he's talking to the same crowd now. Understand this, that all these people he's talking to are under that same grace. It's not automatic. We have to understand that just because you're born again, you will not automatically walk the way you're supposed to walk. Yeah, right. Now, 
when we understand, and, and I, 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 we said this before, we'll say it again. When we understand that the word grace's de definition of God's un undeserved, unmerited favor is an extremely limited definition. And when you try to take that definition and put it everywhere the word grace is used, it'll mess you up. Because grace is more, contextually, you'll find out that grace is a strengthening grace. It's a sustaining grace. It's an empowering grace. It's not just undeserved, unmerited favor. As a matter of fact, I think that is the, the, the least uh, accurate description of that word. <clears throat> It, 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 it is, God's favor is on you, but his favor is on you to strengthen you, to empower you, to sustain you. Uh, there's ministry grace. There's grace that comes on us. It's not God's undeserved unmerited favor. It is ministry grace. It is, it's empowerment for ministry. Amen. God's grace empowers or enables you. There's enabling grace. <clears throat> it enables you to walk free from sin. Now, being under grace does not advocate you from, the, from not sinning. Being under grace empowers you to overcome sin. Yeah. But you still have to walk in the light of that grace. Amen. There's a big difference between it just being, uh, you know, uh, go put on some kind of cloak. You know, a king can put on a cloak and it makes a king. Everybody has to do what he says. That doesn't make him a good king. Yeah. Doesn't make him a responsible king. It just means that he's, he's under something that, that demands other people do what they say, but it doesn't make him what, you know, it doesn't make him a good king. All right? It can make him a really, it can be a really nasty king. Just because you're under grace doesn't make you um, not sin. It'll empower you. It'll give you the strength not to sin. It'll empower you not to sin if you act on it. All right. So here we find out that Paul's saying that this message is bearing fruit everywhere. It's bearing fruit among you. That you're under that grace. You've heard the gospel of truth. You've heard that message. But now that we know that you're that, we're praying and we're desiring that you be filled with all the epinosis, clear, precise, accurate, and experiential knowledge of him. We covered that last week. But then he made this, he gave a qualifier. Not only that you be filled with the clear, precise, and accurate knowledge of God, but you do it in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Now, that's a qualifier on that. You see, there's a lot of people who can learn about God. I was listening, to some, I was at the airport last night. I had to get up and move. Because there was some, I, I, was getting ready, I was getting ready to stand up in the middle of the airport and tell this guy he was an idiot. I thought, you know what, this woman, this woman behind me talking to this man, they've been on some trip, apparently they, they were some kind of tour group or something, they had gone somewhere. This man's talking about, you know, uh, how the Jews, I mean, he's anti-Jew, number one, that the Jews have stole the land from Palestinians and stuff like that. And, I, and I, I'm thinking, you don't even know your history. The Palestinians, you such, that they, they were, they were um, it, it, the best we can find out is that the Palestinians are really the descendants of the Philistines. Yep. And that they did not, that was not their homeland. It was given to them by the British in 1930, 1935. Yeah. It was not the Palestinian homeland. And understand this, everybody hates the Jews. You, British hate the Jews. There's Americans that hate the Jews. There's Russians that hate the Jews. People hate the Jews everywhere. And Britain didn't want the Jews to go back to their homeland. There are people in Britain who did not want the Jews to have, the, have their land back. And this guy's there flapping his mouth. I tell you, you know, um, I forgot who said it, but it was some, some uh, Mark Twain said it. Now, it's better to have your mouth shut and people think you're ignorant than to open your mouth and remove all doubt. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. And this guy goes on. He, he doesn't think the book of Revelation ought to be in the Bible, and he's just going on and on and on. Thinking. I finally got it moved. I thought, you know what? I'm either going to move or I'm going to say something. You know, because you, you, you're just, you're just, I mean, it's like, hey, hey, just, just, you can have a knowledge of God. You can learn about God. You, can, you know, there's people who teach in Bible schools and who have, uh, have very, very great knowledge of God. They don't have it in wisdom and spiritual understanding. There's no wisdom applied to it. There's no spiritual understanding applied to it. And, and, and the church, we, we put a high priority on knowing the Bible. Like a guy I talked about used to be in our home church. Uh, we, used to, we used to kind of jokingly say he had a tape devil. 
Because he always, every time you see him, have you heard the latest series by so-and-so? Have you heard the latest series by so-and-so? Have you heard the, and he wasn't walking in the first series, which was 300 series earlier. He wasn't walking in any of that yet. Yeah. He wasn't walking in the new birth series by Hagen. He's talking about the epi he's talking about the the the, uh, the thing that guy came out with the Merrimos a few years ago, about 15 years ago. Some guy came out teaching on the Merrimos. Some Greek word made a big deal out of it. Everybody just runs to it and they oh it's the Merrimos. Do you have to know about the Merrimos? Do you have to understand the Merrimos? They didn't know what they're talking about. They're just repeating the word. Yeah. So you gotta have spiritual wisdom. You gotta have wisdom and spiritual understanding. Now let's look over here to um. I got to find my place because I'm not there. To James chapter 3. James chapter 3. Now I want you to go in your Bibles. Look down here. We'll, we'll go ahead and pick up in um, verse 13. It says, Who is wise man? Who is a wise man and do with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation or lifestyle of, of uh, lifestyle. Uh, his works with meekness of wisdom. And he says here, a wise man, listen, he said, who's in do with knowledge? Let, uh, who's a wise man in do with knowledge? Notice here, James puts knowledge and wisdom together. And he says, if you've got that, let, demonstrate it. Demonstrate it out of your lifestyle with wor uh, his, his, your works with meekness of wisdom. So, your actions should have wisdom attached to it. Hello? Now, I know this. I remember back in the day of, you know, everybody wanted to out-confess one another. There was, a, there was a day everybody tried to out-confess one another. And um, I believe in confession. I believe confession is good. I believe we should have a good confession. But you know what, if you're just spouting out something just to be spouting it out because you want to make sure that you don't get out confessed, that's not good. It, don't, it won't do you any good. It's got to be of the heart. Are you here? And there's got to be wisdom applied to it. Then people start confessing. They had, you know, I remember we had a, we had a family in our church in, in, in where we're from, and, and they were, bless their heart, bless their heart. And as Brother Hagin said, bless your stupid hearts and ignorant heads or whatever. Bless the hearts and ignorant heads or something. Bless something. They needed some blessing. They, they had a, a restaurant they were running. And, and they could cook, but they couldn't keep it clean. I mean, they had the toilet running. They had a broken toilet. It was running. It's running out, the, running out the, on the floor and running out into the, the restaurant. I mean, I, you know, we understand if nobody's using it, it's just running, running water. But still, that's not, doesn't pass health code. Yeah. Okay? If the health inspector comes in, he's not going to let you keep doing that. Man, they'll get on you. If you've got cracked plates, they'll, they'll get on you. Yeah. And they knock enough points on, they'll, they'll shut your doors. Well, they got inspected. And the first time he came, he locked them up. Wow. <laughs> I mean, you know, you know, they're believing God. Oh, hallelujah. We're confessing that we're blessed in business. We're blessed. Yeah, but you can't be blessed in business if you don't use some brains. Like you can't have the toilet run, and you <coughs> and you got to put some you got to put some hair net on that long hair because I do not want to be swirling up some spaghetti noodles and one of them be your hair. Uh -huh. <laughs> Hello. It was nasty. I mean, there's flour all over the floor. You, you got to keep that stuff cleaned up. Well, anyway, they ended up having to shut the restaurant down because they just they couldn't keep it clean. I'm going to tell you something. Now, I don't know about you. I know about me. If I go into a restaurant and I'm sitting there and I look up and see C. That's C. Ya. That's right. C. Ya. The next word is Ya. See ya later. Hallelujah. I'll be honest with you. If I see a bee that's below a 91 or I mean a 90 or 89, I'm out the door. I worked in the restaurant business for eight years. I know what it takes to get lower than an A. Yeah. <laughs> and let me tell you, you don't want to eat there. Right. Now, I, I remember I, I worked at, um, at Parker's, one, and one time they got a B. They got a 90, an 89.9. No, they got a 90. They told them, okay, you got six weeks to fix this or you're getting a B when we come back. 
and it's because the cinder block walls had gotten old and started cracking. They had to tile up halfway the walls back in the prep building. And so I'm telling you, the next day they were in there, they were tiling, they were doing all, I mean, all kind of work going on to get that stuff, to get everything up to snuff so that they didn't get blow away. I'm telling you. Anyway, they, they, they got to see. Well, you ain't going to have no business because people don't want to eat no C-rated restaurant. Because that means you are nasty. Yeah. <laughs> Just plum nasty. Yeah. I mean, you're doing everything wrong. I, I went one, one time so and saw a D. You think I'm eating in there? <laughs> <laughs> D stood for, where's the door? Yeah. <laughs> well, the, these folks, so they ended up getting closed that restaurant up or got closed up or whatever. They didn't have it anymore. And then they would tell you, I'm believing God for a million dollars. Right. That's my confession. You, you, you're, see, you've got knowledge, but you don't have wisdom. Because if you can't believe God for $10 to put gas in your car, you ain't going to get the million. I'm just telling you. You ain't going to get the million when you can't believe for the 10 Come on now. It's faith, faith, faith. Yeah, but if you haven't developed, listen, it's like, it's like right now. Now, I, I, I tell you, I used to bench 360. Don't put 360 on the barbell and give it to me. Not now. I know that, you know, that, that I have the same muscle, number of muscles, but they're not developed that way. You're going to have, I'm going to have to go back and start developing them at the, down at, you know, with the bar. Right. Fort, shut up. <laughs> my son. I don't tell I wouldn't tell you my congregation other than my son that, but I'm not going to do it in English. Family the bouche. That's French for shut up. <laughs> Amen. They get cocky. They get to a certain age and they just, they, they, they just get cocky. Anyway, yeah, yeah I know more. <laughs> There's some things I know that you don't know. It's like what a two by four is. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, you, you just don't run into the gym and bitch 360 the first day. And, you know, that, that's wisdom. Yeah, I might be able to eventually work my way back up there, but I can't do it now. And, and, and so I have a knowledge that I can lift weights, but my wisdom says you can't lift 360. <clears throat> Dear Lord, I used to squat 400. I ain't doing 400, 415 times. Yeah. I am not doing that now. You know, one time you'd probably be taking me to the hospital or the chiropractor or something. That's a negative confession. No, that's wisdom. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, thank you. You understand? God wants us to have, be filled with knowledge, but with wisdom and spiritual understanding. And so when we hear things, we come into a church and we hear people going, I believe that I receive my healing now in Jesus' name. And I tell you, I, I threw away, I threw away my, my nitroglycerin tablets in the toilet and, and I haven't needed one since. I'm going to try that. And I understand that's not wisdom. Number one, if God, did, if God told him to do that, he does that. If he nothing, you know, you, you follow the Spirit of God. He's got to have wisdom and spiritual understanding of things. Amen. Uh, so here, you show your works with, well, that, well, that's not faith. No, 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 no. Understand faith grows. You develop it and you grow it. Um, I'm trying to think of the man's name that had the orphanage in England. I, I can't think of his name right off. Mueller, George Mueller. He started the orphanage in England, and he, it took every bit of faith he had to believe God for a dollar a day. And he said at the end of his life, after a number of years of running that orphanage, he said, I can believe God today as easily for $1 million as I could for, it took, uh, as I could for $1 when I first started this thing. He said it took, it took him all those years to develop his faith. What? See, the wisdom says you don't, you, you don't step out and try to mimic where somebody else is just because you think you're going to get the same thing they got. They, they, they took them time to get there. Hello? Brother Hagen rode down the road. I heard Pastor Hagen tell the story. He said, he said, I saw my dad get out of the car and fill it up with, well, not even fill it up. He spent, take all the money he had in his pocket, put gas in the car, and get in the car with mom and me and my sister, and, and then to pray and say, Lord, now I just put every, I just used every last, the last dollar I had to put gas in this car. It wasn't even full. He said, now, I need to make it home. And they had 200 miles to go. 
They drove up to the driveway, got out of the car. Came out the next day, he had to walk to the gas station to get a gallon of gas in a gas can and bring it back. And they had to pour gas in the carburetor to get it cranked. It was so dry. But see, you, you see, you see him driving when, when, when Dad was, you know, uh, before we were, you know, he went home, they were driving a Jaguar. You know, the board had given somebody gave him a Jaguar. He's driving a Jaguar. But you don't, we don't hear about the days where he, uh, really much about driving 200 miles on eight, nine gallons of gas. Maybe that much. Those cars didn't get good gas mileage back in them days. Or they suck it down like a, I mean, like a thirsty mule or something, a camel or something. They just suck it down. Hallelujah. We don't hear that. And so we think we're going to jump in where they are. That's not wisdom. Amen. All right, let's go ahead. Um, but if you have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, and devilish. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion in every work. But, now, and we've talked about that, we're, you know, and we're talking about that on, on Wednesday nights. But the wisdom that is from above is first peace. Pure, then peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated, full of mercy and of good works, without partiality, without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. And look over at 1 John chapter 5, verse 20. So we understand that it's pure, it's peaceable, gentle. In other words, it's not, and I'm going to tell you something. Some of the people I've met who think they're, they're quoting stuff or so in your face are usually just, they're, they're not peaceable and they're not easy to be entreated. They're in your face and you get tired of being them in your face. Hello? They're obnoxious. Mm -hmm. I don't like obnoxious Christians in your face with stuff. I like, I like it to be pure and peaceful, easy to be entreated. Amen? Uh, 1 John 5, 20 says, We know the Son of God has come and hath given. Um, du -du 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 -du. My first, okay. And, uh, and hath given us under an understanding that we may know him that is true and we are in him that is true. Hallelujah. Even his son, Jesus Christ, this is, tr this is the true God and eternal life. Notice he says here, hath given us an understanding. All wisdom and spiritual understanding. Uh, so many people get a hold of the knowledge of something. Oh, the Bible says me to make a good confession. And they start making good confessions. But there's no wisdom or understanding that's going along with it. And, and then you get frustrated why it's not working. It's not working because there's no wisdom or spiritual understanding going with it. You're confessing stuff that's outlandish. Now, back to the family who's believing God for the million dollars. Remember them? All right. They didn't want to, didn't want to just drive off and leave them, leave them standing there. Well, God told them that they're going to go on a missions trip. And to go to Raleigh Durham Airport, and somebody's going to buy their whole family of six or seven or whatever, how many of them was? Tickets to Africa or somewhere. I mean, you know, expensive tickets. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe the testimony, the, the quote, pre testimony was it would be first class. So there's the, 10 days at the airport they stayed. Now, let me tell you something. They drove to the airport. A car that they probably put a condemn sign on by the parking attendants. They, when they stopped for gas, they said, give me $2 worth of gas and fill it up with oil. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I mean, it was just. <laughs> After 10 days at the airport, nobody come in buying their ticket. The airport authority threw them out. You can't keep standing. I mean, there's a reason for that. Ten days? Yeah. I mean, I'm sure that the, that the, uh, the fragrance yeah. was not good. Yeah. They're sitting in the airport and they keep, and I don't know all that happened, but you, can you imagine them look, staring at everybody, waiting for them to be the one to come up and give them the ticket? You see, they couldn't believe God for $10. Mm -hmm. Yet yeah, they're going to be for a million. They couldn't believe for airline tickets, but they believe me for a million. See, there's no wisdom there. There's no spiritual understanding of how spiritual things works. Right. Now, it's different if the Lord shows up and says, you stay right here, I'm sending my servant by, and he's going to do such and such. And it's really God. But see, the track record was, now, now listen, I'm going to give you another track record here. The same family, the daughter was at, at East Carolina in, in the student center there, left all of her textbooks sitting there and told the angels to guard them. 
She must have had a lazy angel. Because when she got back, they was gone. Hello? See, yeah, he's given his angels charge over us, but Jesus also said when they was told to jump off the pinnacle of the temple, and because the angels will bear thee up, lest I dash thy foot against a stone, that thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. What's tempting about having the angels watch your books? She's too doggone lazy to carry them herself. So she expects angel to guard them. Well, there's a bunch of East Carolina students who won't listen to the angel. They saw, I don't have to buy that $200 textbook. Woo! Probably had some crazy charismatic came by and go, the Lord blessed me with a whole set of books. <laughs> well, did it, my God, glory to God. <laughs> That's probably what happened. And they're out testifying. The, I tell you today, I said, Lord, I need textbooks, and turned around, and there they were in the chair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's funny. It's inaccurate. Either one of them, neither one of them are right, but still, it's funny. I like it when that happens. Anyway, <coughs> God wants he, wants, he wants us to have, amen, be filled with the knowledge of God, but it's tempered with wisdom and spiritual understanding. It's not just the knowledge of God. Yeah, we need the knowledge of God. We need the epinosis of God. But the tempering of wisdom and spiritual understanding does what? It makes sure that that knowledge is rightly applied so that it's just not knowledge for knowledge's sake. Because I can tell you, knowledge, the Scripture says this, knowledge puffeth up. It's like this guy at the airport. He had, he had got he got a bunch of knowledge from and obviously secular Bible teachers or whatever, but no wisdom or spiritual understanding. So you got to be able to interpret and apply correctly for the word to work rightly in your life. So when you hear a message on confession, you don't go out and try to out confess one another. You know, let me can I say something? Sinners don't care what your confession is. When they ask you how you're doing, they don't care that you're believing God for your healing and, you got, and, and for a new car. Mm -hmm. They don't. They want to know, do you love me and do you care about me and can you help me? So when a sinner asks you how you're doing, don't give them your list. That went over big. Good. Amen. Use, use wisdom, spiritual understanding. Yeah. You know who your confession is for? Honestly, you and between you and God. That's, right. That's who it's for. Yeah, I think there's times you're going to need to tell people what's going on. But if you do, you, and you say, well, you know what? Um, we're, we're, we're believing God that this, this, and this, and praise the Lord, we're, we're trusting the Lord. Amen. But primarily, it's between you and God. And that's where it belongs. Because telling me ain't going to make it work if you don't believe it. And you're not rightly applying it. I mean, I remember, look, back in the 80s, and, listen, and, and things go around cycles. I remember back in the 80s, man, everybody was looking to make sure that nobody made a negative confession because they were going to outdo them if they did. You were going to be attacked by the confession police. You make a negative confession, and whoop, I wouldn't say that if I, you I understand there's a balance of things. If you're, look, if you make yourself accountable, say, look, you know, I'm trying to watch my mouth, help me out here. Yeah, but, that's but a lot of what people were doing was to prove that they had a better confession than you, and they were more spiritual than you. Uh -huh. You didn't help anybody. We didn't help anybody doing that mess. Honestly, we didn't help people. Mm -hmm. They just start mimicking what we were saying without believing it. What's in the bunch of your heart's going to come out? So if someone is making a negative confession, then then if we really love them and want to help them, you know, brother, I tell you what, 
I've got some scripture that would really help be a blessing to you. I know you're going through a hard time, and I want to help you. Do you mind if I help you? No, I don't mind. Here's some scriptures. Why? Because if they'll get that in their heart in abundance, it'll fix the mouth. There's a lot of times we try to fix the mouth and don't fix the heart. It's not a confession at that point. It is not a confession of faith to say or mimic words you don't believe. Now, I'm not talking about with your head. I'm talking about with your heart. It is not a, con a confession of faith. Is, that, is what's in your heart in abundance, and you say it because you believe it. Now, you can mutter it to meditate on it, but that's not faith. That's meditation. And there's a difference. They, they may sound the same on the outside, somebody listening to you, or he's got a lot of faith. Maybe he's just muttering. Maybe he's just meditating. So let's get to the point that our, our knowledge is not just knowledge. It's knowledge and wisdom and spiritual understanding. We rightly apply it. We know when to use it and how to use it. We become skillful. Remember, remember Paul wrote in Hebrews and talked about that, um, that, that they were, who, were, who, had, uh, who ate meat were skillful in the word of righteousness? Mm -hmm. We need to become skillful. But see, you're not skillful just because you know it. Right. I know that if you have the right batting stance and, and take the right approach to hitting a baseball, you can hit it out of the park. But that don't make me skillful. Just because I know. You know, you got batting coaches now who can't go out and hit what they teach. Because their reflexes aren't there. They're not, you know, they haven't done it in so long. They haven't been in that kind of situation in so long. I, I tell you, I picked up a baseball bat a few, a few years ago and swung it. And I thought, it, it felt awkward because I hadn't, I hadn't played baseball in, in years. You know? But when I was playing, man, it was just as natural as breathing. Yep. But it had been years, and it felt awkward. I didn't have the right stance. I didn't have the right mechanics. They were all, all the muscle memory was gone and all that. All, it wasn't there. Yeah. See? Now, I, I may know what to do, but I'm not skillful in it. Hello? Mm -hmm. And so we need to become, see, wisdom and spiritual understanding are things that bring you to a skillful application of the knowledge so that you know how to rightly use it. And that's what we want. So, yes, study the Word, feed on the Word. But then, as Paul said, he prays that they will have the, to be filled with the knowledge of God in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. So that we, we rightly apply the word of truth. So that we take those things that we're learning and not misuse them. Now, obviously, a baseball bat is to hit stuff with. You don't go hit people with it. Amen. Amen. That's a misuse of that tool. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. So he said, you know, John says, we know the Son of God has come out, given us an understanding. Thank God for understanding. How many, ever, how many have ever heard a Bible lesson or a Bible teaching and somebody told you to do something with it and you just went out and did it, but you didn't understand anything? You had no understanding as to why you were doing it. Yeah, okay. See, the understanding, you see, if you really don't understand it, it's going to be difficult to really be, stay in faith about it. I know faith is of the heart and that you can hear something and faith come, but I'm going to tell you, if, if there's no understanding, you're not gonna, you're not, you won't be able to hold it. You've got, you've got to come into spiritual understanding. It's spiritual application and how God does it. And that comes, I'm going to tell you something, some of this stuff just comes from experience. Just keep a pure heart, stay meek, asking God for wisdom. He that lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who giveth to all men liberally, not braveth not. Lord, I need wisdom. I, I know what your word says here, but I need wisdom for application. I need the understanding to use it rightly. I need these things. And, and God will answer and God will help you. But see, that, that comes on your part of wanting that. Instead of running out copying Brother Bill. Well, Brother Bill said this and it worked for him. That's going, I'm going to make it work for me. Yeah, ask the guy who, who went bankrupt do, drilling oil wells like the way. Remember Dad Hagen used to tell a story about the guy who uh, the Lord spoke to him and said, I want you to go drill oil here and drill it at a 45 degree angle. And he went out and did it and struck oil every time. Finally, the, his... his uh, his boss, the, the, the guy, the foreman, who, who, who bucked him every time he said do something, finally came and said, where do you want to drill next? And then he gave that testimony in church. Some guy who was in the oil business said, oh, if it worked for him, it'll work for me. I said, that's, that's having a knowledge that it worked. And he went out and did it and went bankrupt. Why? There was no wisdom or understanding. God didn't speak to him that way. God didn't tell him to do it that way. Now, God will tell you, listen, 
You can't run off and use certain scriptures to manipulate things. God's not a respecter of persons. If you make uh, so-and-so rich in the furniture business, he'll make me rich in the furniture business. Not if he didn't tell you to do it. Hello? Mm -hmm. Y'all hear you gone home? Well, so-and-so took their glasses off and stomped them. And you, start, you took yours off and had a wreck. <laughs> they were instantly healed. They had, they, now, they had a woman who did that. They, somebody gave a testimony. The Lord t told them, said, take your glass off and stomp them. They did it. This woman said, well, I'm going I'm to do that. The Lord did it for them. They, he'll do it for me. They took the glass off, riding all over the road, riding up on the curb, came back and said, you know, I'm, 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 I'm having real trouble here. I'm riding all over the road. They can't see where I'm going. He said, put your glasses back on. And then what happened was, over a period of time, their eyes got better and better, and they had to keep going back to the doctor and get a lesser and lesser prescription until finally they went back and they didn't need their glasses anymore. Well, why didn't he do it the way he did the other person? I don't know. You know what? That's not my business. And it, quite frankly, it's none of yours. Why the Lord does certain things certain ways, why somebody gets instantly healed, why somebody gets progressively, does it matter? We're after the end result. Isn't that right? We want the end result, so it doesn't matter what the, you know, the, how you got there as long as you got there. And if the Lord tells you to take your glasses off and stomp them, praise the Lord. Now, Jesus told some people, to, you know, to, I mean, listen, he, you know, he didn't do this all the time. One guy he came up to, guy was blind, he spit on the ground and made clay out of the spit and stuck it in his eyeballs. And so he got washed in the pool of Siloam and come again and see, and he did. But he did this the only time he did that. Now, one other guy was deaf, was dumb, couldn't talk, told him to stick his tongue in and he spit on it. Don't you try that. If God don't tell you to do that, you don't try. I saw a minister, I've seen ministers be in services where somebody had back problems and line them up, they run across their back and they get healed and, you know, oh, I'm going to do that, run across the back and they get lawsuits. <laughs> Hello? We have to follow wisdom and spiritual understanding. If, just because we have the knowledge of something doesn't mean that it's going to work until we have the wisdom. That's why Paul made the qualifier. Because we feel with wisdom and spiritual understanding. Everybody say, wisdom and spiritual understanding. Amen. And it's prayer to the Colossians. He, wants, he wanted them to be filled with knowledge, but that knowledge in wisdom and spiritual understanding. He, he put a qualifier on it for a reason. So that it would be rightly applied. It wouldn't be misapplied. They wouldn't get lifted up or puffed up. I know more. It doesn't, I don't care if you got a better confession. I mean, can you walk in it? Because if you can't walk in the confession that's better than mine, mine's working better. And I'm more impressed with a guy who's walking in a lesser confession than a guy who can make a better one. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Now, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Um, in that meeting the other night with, with uh, Keith Hudson, he said, so, man, I, I, I got, he, 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 he was different. He dresses different. I mean, he's got the shaved head and the metro glasses and the skinny black jeans and the long t shoes. I mean, I'm, I'm saying, from the natural, I'm thinking, this ain't working for me. I'm, be, I'm just being real, I'm be real, real, real honest. This ain't working for me. Just seeing him. You know what I'm saying? And then he got to start preaching. And as soon as he opened his mouth, the anointing was there. I got rebuked by the anointing. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, that boy, it straightened me up. I was like, no, Lord, I have to repent because I'm going to tell you right now. Looking at him, I thought, I'm going to have a hard time receiving from that. I, I was. I was really honest. I mean, that's how I felt. I mean, it looked, it looked kind of sugary to me. <laughs> I'm just going to be honest with you. I'm just looking too sugary. A little too sweet for me. But the anointing, he, he says, I dress different than other people. Well, okay. You know, but the anointing, the anointing straightened me and slapped me a couple of times. Pretty good and hard. I had to repent. So then I had my picture made with him. Yeah. <laughs> and posted it on Facebook. Right. <laughs> Amen. Because the, the anointing will straighten you out. Amen. Amen. And, uh, and one of the things he said, you know, he said that, that really struck me in the middle of this was, you know, uh, people, our, 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 our Christie's confessions, and we're just running around making them all the time. You need to be making them. You do, you, you, do you know when you need to be making it? 
when you're in your car, sitting in your car riding down the road, I'm blessed coming in and blessed going out. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above only and not beneath. I, I'm favored of God, highly favored of God. The blessings of the Lord are upon me. Now, Lord, I'm saying all that, but I need your wisdom and spiritual understanding so it's rightly applied. Instead of telling somebody else some of these things. Right. Hello. Especially, especially those outside the church. We've got to, we've got, and I said, listen, I, yeah, I've been guilty too. I'll say, I'll do some of the same things. But I, I kind of got slapped around a little bit. Think, you know what? That's right. Where, where does that belong? Where is that really applicable? It's applicable in, in, in me in private, between me and the Lord. If I need to make it publicly, it, it needs to be in the right circumstances and not just, you know, whatever. You know, because the guy who's hurting doesn't need to know that you're, you're the head and not the tail. He needs to find out how he can be. Right. Well, that'll open a door. Why don't you, well, listen, if he's hurting, you say, hey, man, you know what, you know, can I help you? You know, the Lord loves you, and, and, I, and I, I can help you. Let's be, let's be genuine. Amen? Amen? All right. So, make sure that we, we understand, we have an understanding, that we apply things in wisdom and spiritual understanding. And, uh, and then next Sunday, we're going to get to back uh, walking worthy of the Lord. Woo! That went over big. I expect a bigger crowd next week. Because we're going to walk worthy of the Lord. Amen? Amen? But look, let's make sure that the knowledge we have is applied rightly. With the right attitude, the right heart, and the right method, you know, of applying it. And not trying to just be a show-off. And I know some people are doing stuff and they do it because they believe that's what they're supposed to do. And I, I, I get that. But a, there are people who just do stuff because they're trying to prove that they're better. Amen. They've got more than you. They're a, they're a leg up on you spiritually. Hello? That, and that's not going to get you anything. That won't get you anything. It won't get you ahead. It won't put you over the top. Amen. Don't you think when Jesus was talking about, you know, let your alms be done in private and that kind of stuff and different things he said do in private, he also is talking about, you know, um, he said don't cast your pearl before the swine. There are things we just don't do in certain arenas that we do do in private. Let's, let's grow in that knowledge. Let's be filled with that knowledge. Let's apply it in wisdom and spiritual understanding so that we are a blessing. Amen? That we are a blessing. Now, Jesus was great. But study his life. Hello? You don't hear him go and confess, I have a new donkey in Jesus' name. Do you? Not publicly. Now, he spent times all night praying. He was praying about the ministry. He was praying about different things. I'm sure he, he addressed things with the Father in prayer. And there were things he said in prayer and, and was believing in prayer. That he didn't go out and just spout out, I'm believing God for a new donkey. But when it's time for it, he said, now you go over here and you'll see a, a, a donkey tied up over there. You go get him and bring him. In. And if they ask you what you're doing, say the master has need of him. So he got it. And we never have a record of him confessing it to everybody else. Now I believe he was, he was doing, I, I believe he was confessing. I believe he was speaking things in faith. In private. I just, listen, this is not, don't, don't come at me and, and you go, oh, I'm sorry, Pastor, I made a pack. No, don't, I'm not, don't get weird. But let's also not be weird the other way. Let, let's get, get to where we're walking in that wisdom and spiritual understanding. There may be some times you need to come to me and say, Pastor, I need for you to agree with me. Here's, here's what I'm believing. Here's been, this, what my confession is in private, but I need for you to agree with. That's fine. Praise the Lord. Let's get with it. Amen. I'll agree with you. Amen. We, w we want to grow. We want to help people. We want to bless people. We don't want to run people off. Amen. By lack of wisdom. Now listen, this is not a rebuke or a proof. This is to say, let's, let's use wisdom and spiritual understanding. Let's apply these things rightly so that they're helpful and not hurtful. So that they bless. Amen and don't turn off so that they bring light instead of bringing confusion. Somebody else say amen. 